Hello and welcome to the Counselor Complete OMS training series. This video will focus on the areas of counselor that are general for all staff, meaning features and workflows that each staff member will likely encounter on a routine basis. We'll specifically focus on the dashboard, the user chat feature, the to-do list feature, as well as a general overview of the patient administration screen. So let's get started. As I mentioned, we'll begin here in the dashboard. Now the dashboard is a unique uh, feature within Counselor where each person on staff gets to design what information they're going to see on a routine basis. Right? So this is information that uh, you may need on a hour-to-hour, day-to-day, or week-to-week -week basis, whatever the case may be. You have it in one place. You can organize the information in the manner you see fit and find that information quickly as well as take the next step. So here's an example uh, for a dashboard I created, where I grouped, uh, for example, all of the appointment widgets that I wanted to see in one place, right? And that allows me to focus in on the area. Now, I should mention each one of these groupings are entirely up to you. So you can have a hodgepodge of different widgets together. Um, and I should probably clarify, each one of these boxes are what we call a widget, right? So very generically speaking, each widget has its own focus, functions, and ability, of course, to take the next step. So here, for example, many of these are related specifically to appointments. Okay, this one's sort of a hodgepodge here as well. If we look at devices, for example, um, there are a variety here related to the tracking of devices as well as determining when a patient may need to be contacted. Right, so just to give some examples here, uh, let's look at the patient devices activity widget. Uh, this is where I can, we can say, show me all hearing instruments that are in some stage of activity, out for repair, receive for repair, maybe it was a drop off. Uh, you can track all that right within counter. You're not relying on a clipboard or having to remember or a spreadsheet. You can see that in real time right within counselor, not only determine that, hey, uh, uh, what's kind of out there, but is there anything that's been out there for too long, right? Do we need to take action? Do I need to call the manufacturer and make sure that everything is okay, all right? Uh, as well with these widgets, as I referenced a few times here, you can also take the next step. So let's take the device warranty expiration widget. Here we can see, um, you know, the option to see all hearing instruments, hearing instruments for example, that um, have warranties that'll expire at a certain time right next month the month after next this month whatever the case may be you can choose your time frame counselor then shows you the list and then you can take the next step you can say okay great i want to send out emails uh, to these patients i wish to print off letters uh, print off envelopes labels postcards i want to drop this into a spreadsheet right so with those uh, simple tools you can not only have the list but then take the next step all right now, beyond just sending the email of the letter, if you ever do send an email from counselor or print off a letter, counselor will make a note in the patient's profile stating what happened, okay? So if, for example, let's say we send up a whole slew of emails here to the whole list, or one email to the whole list, I should say, a note will be made in each patient's profile. So that way, if a patient called in and says, hey, I got your email, and I want to set up an appointment, great. One of the challenges, of course, frequently is we're not sure what email they're referring to or what letter they've received, um, because it could have been an email or a letter invoice. It could have been a happy birthday letter or email. It could have been warranty expiration in this case, or device service plan expiration, or battery club, or maybe we did a, a promotion, right? Where we're contacting patients with devices of a certain age, right? So this widget would help you find all patients that have devices, say, older than four years or three years, and then you can have other criteria that goes into it as well. Um, but point being is that you may have several different efforts, um, you know, points of contact for the patient going out at any given time, right? Uh, and so this enables anyone on the staff to look in the patient profile and determine what has been sent to that patient, okay? Um, and that's part of the communication features in Council. We're going to talk about that a little bit more when we review the user chat feature as well as the to-do list. Um, but this is certainly a significant part of it is just seeing what's happening for a patient within their profile without having to know, of course, everything that's happened. Okay, so specifically back to the dashboard, as I mentioned, uh, the, count the counselor has created this to be very flexible. So each person can decide uh, what information they're going to see. Now, I will say not everyone has access to all information. Uh, this is based on security settings. So not everyone, for example, would have access to aggregate business data. 
right? Um, not everyone have access to unit sales and that type of thing. So uh, uh, this can be refined on a user, on a staff member by staff member basis. Okay, uh, but the dashboard is very flexible, very easy to set up. Uh, you can do so by creating new dashboards here to add a new dashboard that enables you to select the widgets you want to see and title them. Now, once again, you can title these anything that you want, whatever will prompt you to know which widgets are within that specific dashboard. Okay, and they can be changed in the fly. And once again, whenever you make any changes to these, you're only affecting your own profile in counselor will not affect anyone else's profiles okay so go ahead and test out the widgets test out the different dashboard views um, rearrange them you get them in a way that you see fit uh, and then uh, and then go from there of course all right so moving on from the dashboard um, counselor also has and this is, as I mentioned goes right into kind of the general communication features in counselor so counselor also has uh, a user chat feature. And this is the ability to send and receive messages in real time from wherever you are, right? So this means that you can set up a chat uh, with multiple people. So you could say, I wanna create a new chat. I can see who's currently logged in. So Kirsten, Linda, and Nancy are all logged into our account. Uh, this is all a fake account with fake patient data and fake, fake patient name or provider names and staff member names. Uh, but currently, uh, they're logged in, so I can see who's available, right? So I can create a chat message with Linda and then maybe add Nancy, right? Or not, right? That's up to you. Um, and I can see now they've logged out, so that's how about that for timing. Um, but you can create as many different chat features as you want there, okay? Or chat, fee I'm sorry, chat recipients as you want there. Now, the... Um, once you have the chat in place, you of course then can send messages back and forth. They'll receive them as pop-ups in real time. So for example, here, if I was to send a message, uh, just keep with the pattern here and say test. I see some of this in testing there. Uh, we'll say test seven. Now I'm gonna jump into a different browser where I'm logged in as Linda. Linda receives the pop-up here. She can see who sent it and the message, of course. Now Linda can reply right back to that message. Okay, and then Kate will receive that pop-up message. Now, I already had Kate's chat window open, so we can see that the message already populated. It didn't show up as a pop-up because we already had this open. Had I had this closed, it would have then given me the pop-up. So you'll see the user chat feature used in a variety of ways in Counselor through the um, arrival notice. So when a, a patient is ready to be seen, uh, the front office staff, of course, can select the arrival notice, and that will send a pop-up message to the provider letting him know the patient is ready to be seen. Okay. You also see this uh, related to the virtual super bill process. So as a provider, I have finished my virtual super bill. I can then right away send a pop-up message to the front desk letting them know that the super bill is completed and is ready for invoicing. Uh, and then, of course, the front office staff can click on that uh, pop-up and it will take them right into the screen where the provider was just working so they can then launch the invoice from there, right? Some of these areas will be in the, um, the more job-specific training parts of this series. Uh, so I want to just talk, generally speaking, about the chat feature. But point being is you can be on any internet-able device. Um, you can send messages back and forth, doesn't matter where you are, does not matter where the recipient is, and of course you can add multiple uh, recipients at the same time. Okay. Now, uh, so the chat feature I mentioned is, is available from the top right hand corner. This is really your real time messaging. I need to talk to someone right now. But not all communication needs to or should happen that way, right? There are times when you need to create tasks. This would be for yourself, for other people, uh, these tasks can be relative to a specific patient or they could be generic, right? So some examples there. You have a generic example would be, I'm asking someone on staff to buy uh, three cartons of batteries by the end of the week, right? Something simple. Or I'm creating a task for myself to remember to get milk on the way home, right? It doesn't have to be anything necessarily work specific. Um, or let's take the patient side of it. Let's say I want to find a patient and I want to create a task. So let's just look up a patient real quick here. And let's say for Mr. Johnston that he, and I see he has an old task available, so that should have been closed out by now. Um, but let's say he has a repair that just came back. We can go ahead and click on the plus symbol here. Uh, it automatically select him as the kind of the, the focus of the task. And then I can say who do I want to assign this to. So I'm going to assign this to Kirsten. 
I'll select uh, the date I want it, you know, needed to complete it by. So let's say the 30th, and that can be changed as needed. Uh, and then I can go ahead and select my tax, right? So we then can go through here, and uh, you'll see a whole slew of preset templates. Of course, these all can be modified. So these are just sample ones that we have in place in our, our test account, our sandbox account. But you'd have a great deal of control of these. But let's just use a common example here. Let's say uh, we need a repair pickup with an appointment and there's going to be a charge. Okay, instead of you having to type in uh, Tom Johnson's name and his phone number into the task, Counselor can enter that for you. Now this is something, these, uh, this feature is something you'll see throughout Counselor. They're called placeholders. Anytime you see something in yellow, it means you don't have to do a thing. That means Counselor will automatically enter that information into whatever you're working on, whether it be a task, whether it be a marketing letter, a chart note, professional report, uh, patient note, there's a variety of different ways that these work, uh, counselor will fill that information in for you straight away. Okay, now in this case, let's say I wanted to add a quick note in here and say that the charge is $45. Okay, what happens now is once I save this, and actually I'm going to go ahead and just complete that old task to get it off the list, there we go, so you can see how easy it is to complete tasks. Um, when Linda looks at, I'm sorry, in this case with Kirsten, when Kirsten looks at her task list, she will now see call Tom Johnson at this number to schedule a pair pickup appointment and a charge applies. She can see this from her task list, which is always available in the top right hand corner of the screen. Uh, this also, uh, there is a to do list widget that can be added to your dashboard. It's a very commonly used dashboard widget. It just gets your, your past, you know, your overdue, your uh, do today and your future tasks all in one place. You can see those very quickly and very easily. Okay. Uh, but the point being is that uh, in this case, Kirsten would see the task. She can then take the next step. So she can hop in here. She can call the patient. She can make notes. She can move the due date. Maybe she contacted the patient and the patient's going to be on vacation for a month. Okay. Let's move this task out one month. Uh, she could reassign the task or add multiple uh, individuals as well. Now, if no one is designated for the task, it automatically becomes a clinic task. That's one that you want everyone to see, perhaps in the case I gave before of we need to buy some batteries. Doesn't matter who does it, whoever gets to it first. So we can make it a clinic task. Everyone then can see it. Anyone can take action and close that task out. Okay. So the task management, the to-do list feature is really designed to eliminate the need for post-it notes for verbal reminders, you know, the, the, hey, can you do this for me? Or, you know, can you call this patient to pick up the repair? Uh, we'll need an appointment. There's going to be a $45 charge, right? That works most of the time, but it doesn't work all the time. That's the challenge. And of course, it's not trackable. Whereas if you're creating tasks, you can track notes along with that. Call this patient date and time. I reassign this task to someone else because I won't be in tomorrow and then they can call the patient. And that's all trackable within the system. So I would strongly encourage you to test out the uh, task feature, uh, practice with it, because uh, you'll find it to be a great resource for really keeping on top of just obviously different tasks and making sure that nothing falls through the cracks. Okay. Now, um, to stay on this screen here, uh, I mentioned at the outset, we'll also do a general overview of the patient administration screen. This is a particularly important screen in Counselor. Uh, the way we view it is this essentially is home base for you. This is where you'll spend most of your time when you're focused on a patient, right? Uh, this is where uh, you can do most anything, right? You can track the information, you can launch other activities, you know, sending out questionnaires, creating invoices creating a chart note, a patient visit, right? You can do a lot from this screen, okay? And I emphasize that because while the schedule in counselor is very important, it is still just a feature. Counselor does not force you to go through the schedule to do other things. You can do a lot of things through the schedule, but just a general kind of mindset is that if you wanna do something relative to a patient, you typically will be navigating into their profile. Okay, and to get to their profile, of course, you certainly can once again navigate through the schedule if you want, but very commonly we'll be using the patient search feature. Now, this patient search feature enables partial name searching. So if I was searching here for Tom Johnson, you may notice before I did Tom John, I certainly could have done T John, right? Show me every patient with uh, T in the first name, John in the last name, or something shorter. I also could have searched by his phone number, his date of birth, his nickname, his email address, 
the serial number of any devices that he has, any hearing instruments, for example. So there's a lot of ways that you could very quickly search on a wide variety of criteria and find this patient profile. Okay. As part of the following the patient profile, we were to, if we were to look up Tom again here, one thing we'll notice right away is that his profile is in red. And that tells me there's an alert for this patient, something that either I put in or someone else on staff put in that we want everyone to be aware of. And when I hover over his profile, I can see what that alert is. So first off, he left his hat in the office and there are concerns there for memory loss. Okay, so it's just something that would let you know right away. You also see those alerts when you're scheduling a patient, right? Because some of that may inform how you schedule the appointment. For example, if the patient uh, is in collections. Great thing to know as you're going through the scheduling process. Um, the reason I bring up this point is because it's pretty prominent within the patient visit screen here. So our patient administration screen, I'm sorry. So we're going to start here just on the general tab and kind of look through and then we'll work our way through the patient administration screen. Um, so of course here we can see um, who the clinic, a patient's preferred clinic is or which uh, is the patient's for, for a clinic. Of course their name. Um, all that's required for the screen is the preferred clinic, the first name, the last name, and the date of birth. Okay, obviously there's loads more that you can add, uh, but that's the bare minimum you need to create a patient profile. Okay, um, as we look through here, we can see here's the alert that the patient left the hat in the office. Now the alert I should mention is a free field. You can type in anything that you want. Um, it can be something that could be transient, right? In this case, once we gave him the hat back, we would remove this alert or something that stays with the patient for longer periods of time, okay? Um, there also is the ability with the counselor to create patient tags. Now these are more um, consistent, it's a more consistent way of tracking specific aspects about the patient. So in this case, uh, there are concerns for low vision, tinnitus, uh, dementia, and memory loss, right? Maybe the tinnitus is tran transient, it's gone, we can remove that. Maybe the patient had cataract surgery and that can be removed. You control your own list of tags. Right? So it allows you to group them and then say, for example, that they're on blood thinners. Right? So particularly if this is a patient where maybe you're spending a lot of time in their ear, a Lyric or a, you know, a CIC device or anything like that, um, then you may want to know right, that the patient's on blood thinners. Right? Or frequently you're performing serum removal on this patient or they are requesting that, you may want to know that they're on blood thinners. So the point being is you can very easily add alerts as well as tags to their profile. And then of course, specific with tags, this is all trackable. So at any point later on, you could say, show me all patients, let's do a search, uh, that have a certain tag or don't have a certain tag, right? So these can be all over the place as far as what you specifically want to track. Okay, moving through here, of course, we can track a preferred name, um, obviously the suffix, the title, right? All these different uh, criteria you can kind of look through. Um, you also have the ability to designate a referring and primary physician. Uh, this will show your full physician referral database. Of course, you then just go ahead and select that physician and it will fill them in, okay? Or you can also just start typing in. So as you start typing, it'll show you phys physicians that match, okay? Um, as we go through here, obviously a lot of other fields that can be entered as well, including the ability to track a HIPAA notice, um, as well as when this record was last recorded. So if you want to routinely review patient records, let's say once a year, you want your, your goal is that once a year we'll, we'll review every patient's record, right? But you could do that over time. And so you could start reviewing records and this is to update, make sure their contact information is correct, that the insurance information is updated, that type of thing. So it allows you to track there as well. Now, several of these fields I should mention can be filled through the questionnaire process, which we'll talk about more in just a moment here. But if the patient is to complete, or it does complete like an intake form, case history form, which by the way is all online. If they were to complete that prior to, let's say their first appointment, some of these fields would fill in. Right, so they could select what their employment status was and marital status and what their uh, social security number is, uh, their contact information. And by them completing that online questionnaire, it will then autofill the respective areas in the, the patient administration screen. Okay, so you're not necessarily adding all of this information manually. Okay, um, within the general tab as well, of course, we can see here we have the patient profile picture. There are a variety of ways of getting the profile picture in place. Of course, you can scan in, say, their photo ID. So you ask for the photo ID, you put on a scanner glass, and it, come, and it is pulled directly into the counselor. There's no need to download and upload. OK, 
Okay. This direct scan feature also works with insurance cards. Uh, it also works with document storage. So if you want to, um, you know, store an image of a document relative to this patient, right? It can go right from the scanner directly into Counselor. Okay. Now, two other methods here uh, uh, to mention are uh, the snapshot feature and webcam options. This gives you the ability with Snapshot to use a smartphone or a tablet. It can be an Apple-based or Android-based and use it to take a picture of the patient's smiling face or their photo ID or whatever the case may be. And in this case, of course, it would then load that image directly into the profile picture. Okay, same thing goes for the webcam. You could be using uh, your webcam to take a picture of the patient or their photo ID. And these can also be used when we're talking about insurance cards once again or loading um, you know, documents is more general. These also could be images. They could be the patient's uh, hearing instrument that got chewed up by their cat. And you want to take an image, collect an image, and store that in place. So you're documenting how the patient's device arrived to your office. Okay. Uh, these two methods, of course, are fully, can be fully touchless. Uh, so it gives you the ability to capture the image without anything actually training hands. Okay. All right, so let's move on, or I'm sorry, let's scroll down here for a moment. If the patient has any previous test results in place, we can see uh, their previous hearing tests. If we click here, we can see the audio, and we can, of course, cl uh, click through to see any previous tests as well, okay? Um, beneath that, we can see the task list. So there's the task that we just created uh, for this patient. All right, now moving on to the contact tab. Uh, of course, you can store um, uh, a lot of different uh, data points here. So th three options for phone numbers, two for email addresses, and three options for mailing addresses as well. Now, Counselor has some tools built in to help with this. Uh, so you can see there's an address here already in place. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and just repeat that process here. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-enter that address. And what you're gonna notice here is that I'm not typing well. Right, um, I'm not taking care to do this well or to format, but as soon as I enter the state, counselor looks out to the US Postal Service database and says, okay, what is the official address for this location? Okay, and then it adds in the zip plus four. So automatically it formats and adds a zip plus four. And that of course has two major advantages. One is that of course, anytime uh, we create or enter a mailing address. We, we want you know it to be accurate, we want it to be formatted properly so that anything we send out to the patient, whether it's a newsletter or an invoice, uh, gets it, that it gets to the patient, of course, right? Very important. The second thing is this gives us the ability then to bring open an interactive map showing how to get from where the patient lives to our office. So if this is a new patient calling in, right away you have the ability to give them time and distance estimates you have the ability to give them specific turn-by-turn -turn directions on how to get, once again, from where they live to your office. Now, even better than this, you have the ability to include a link to the same interactive map within your automated email. So, uh, for example, email confirmation messages that go out. You can have a link uh, embedded in that email. Uh, and perhaps a little title that says click here to, you know, see an interactive map of how to, uh, you know, um, um, drive to our office, right? And they click that link and it will open whatever mapping feature they have on that device. So let's say they're on their Android phone. They're prepping to come to your office. They bring open the map. It opens uh, Google Maps. Uh, and then all they have to do is tap go or start, right? And then it will navigate them from where they are, wherever they are at that moment. Not necessarily just home, but wherever you're at that moment, to your office. Okay, uh, this uh, you know mapping link can also be sent out on demand. So if you have a patient's daughter that calls in and says, "Hey, I'm bringing my dad in this afternoon. Can you give me directions?" Or I'm you know we're going to stop by and and do this first at the PT office and and then come over. Can you give me directions from the PT office? You don't have to go through all those steps. You can simply say, "I'd be happy to help. I'll shoot you an email in just a moment here." that email will contain a link. Go ahead and click that link and that will give you an interactive map on how to arrive at our office, okay? So uh, just the ability, of course, to assist with getting patients to your office successfully in a timely fashion, okay? Now the third tab here um, after the, um, I'm sorry, I apologize to mention on a, a few areas of here, there are things you can select as, of course, as you know, primary um, contact, uh, form of contact. If you want to add them to do not call list, as well as the do not text list, do not email, uh, do not uh, mail, right? So there's different ways you control uh, how this patient can be communicated with. 
Uh, there's also the ability, if you had the texting feature available, to launch a text message directly from here. Now this patient says do not email. Let's go ahead and update that. Uh, if the patient is set to be able to be mailed to them or emailed to them, then you of course can send emails directly from here as well. Okay. Um, the last, uh, the next tab here, I'm sorry, uh, with the is the demographics information. So this is the ability to track very specific information about this patient. This is all optional, uh, but can be very helpful, you know, kind of long term. Now, if you make any changes to one of these or all of these uh, first three tabs, general, contact, and demographics, you do want to make sure you click save at the bottom of the screen. Now, you could do multiple things. You could say, okay, Tom's middle initial is W. There we go. Uh, maybe contact information. I'm going to add a secondary uh, phone number. Okay. Um, you also have the ability to, you know, once again, I'll say that um, the first language is American Sign Language, right? If I click save here, it will save all of those changes. The changes I made to the general tab with the middle initial, the contact with the secondary phone number, as well as the indication regarding the language. Okay, so you can make changes across these three tabs, but you do want to make sure you click save. Because Counselor is a cloud-based system, obviously the big advantage is you can access from anywhere, you can log in from anywhere, and you can you can uh, work from anywhere, right? But it does mean that when you make a change, you do want to make sure you click save uh, in the as part of these first three tabs here. Okay, so you wouldn't want to say click new policy because that will launch you into another screen and you might lose uh, the change you just made. Okay. So let's move forward though. Uh, obviously in Counselor you can store insurance information as well. Now the goal here is that you can store as many insurance policies as you want. So you have your primary, your secondary, your tertiary, your active and your inactive policies, and you can view all the information of course here, but you also can dive in and see more details. Okay, so within this policy, it's already in place. Let's go ahead and look here. We of course can have the information on the policy itself, the insurance card information front and back, uh, with the same methods, by the way, of capturing the image of the card in front and back, along with notes that you have as well, right? So if this um, policy does have a hearing aid benefit, you may have logged notes in there. And really the goal here is that if a question ever arises regarding this policy, maybe there's an issue with a claim, you can go to one place to find all the information you need, okay? You're not having to bounce around. You can see the images of the cards. You can see your notes. Uh, you can go from there. Okay. Counselor also has the ability to perform eligibility checks. So this is the ability to determine on the fly whether or not this is a valid policy. So it basically says, okay, we can determine that on the spot. And then you can see later on, the last time we checked was November of 2017. So let's check again. Okay. Well, now this is all fake information. So of course it comes back as not being valid. The whole focus there is that you have the ability to determine on the spot before you provide any services for this patient. This could be if you collect the information over the phone or when they first arrived to your office. But point being is you know, hey, there's an issue. Did I have a typo? Did the patient give me their expired insurance cards, right? Instead of their current insurance cards. But you know right away. And for those of you that work with billing coding reimbursement, you'll know that detecting and eliminating these errors at this point save several hours after the claim has been submitted and got rejected because there was an issue. So a little, little bit of attention at this point saves a lot of time and a lot of hassle later on. Okay, um, if you also need prior authorizations, that can be tracked in this screen as well. Um, so if you uh, need to, you can track them there and then refer to them anytime. Okay, back in the patient administration screen, once again, we can see that single policy, as I mentioned, you can store as many policies as you want. All right, so moving rightward here, we can see the Appointments Visits tab. Now the Appointments Visits tab allows you to see a lot of information in one place. Um, and just to define this, basically appointments refer to specifically what is on the schedule, right? It's a representation of what is on the schedule. I can hover over any of these appointments and I can see any um, you know, referral source, any tracking, any you know, audit trail that went along with this appointment. So in this case, we can see all the adjustments that occurred over time for this appointment, okay? Um, and then of course, eventually would happen. Now typically you would see this as being completed, right? Um, then we have the ability to look at visits. Now visits refer to the documentation of a patient encounter, right? This, whether it's a quick and simple chart note, or if it's a full on 
audio eval report, an tinnitus eval, or vestibular eval, or whatever the case may be, pediatrics, APD, speech pathology, whatever the case may be, this is going to be your documentation of encounter. Right? It could even be the documentation of a phone call you have with the patient. Right. So the point being is the it's the official record of that uh, encounter with the patient. Now, while these go in tandem, uh, counter counter shows them separately. So, for example, if you had a patient who no showed three or four times, but walked in once, you'd be able to see that right in one view. Um, it also means that counselor has the ability with the visits then to have a, a truly robust documentation feature, not just a simple sort of, you know, chart note or outcome note. Um, so point being is you can see a lot in one space here within the appointments. Now you'll notice within these features is also the ability to, you know, for example, launch a new appointment. And of course, if you are already in a patient's profile here with uh, Tom Johnston and we're on the phone, I could launch the schedule directly from here, go to create his appointment, and counselor will already know that I'm talking about or, you know, focusing on Tom Johnston. Okay, so without you having to search for the patient within the schedule, you can, or, you know, when you're adding the appointment, you can straight away um, get the appointment added uh, very quickly. Okay, um, we also, of course, can launch a new visit from here, launch a new chart note, as well as view our previous chart notes as well. Okay. All right, as I mentioned earlier, the questionnaire feature, very straightforward. You can launch a questionnaire directly from here. You can choose how the patient is going to view that questionnaire, either via email. Um, uh, of course, you can choose which questionnaires they're going to receive uh, via email, and, or if you want to show them a screen when they're in your office or hand them a tablet computer. But point being is that you can launch, uh, you know, you can choose what uh, questionnaires they're going to receive, intake forms, case history, surveys, uh, and then the patient completes that entirely online, right? So as I referenced earlier, once they uh, launch that questionnaire, they can see the information you've already entered for them. So their phone number, their mailing address, they can make corrections as well as add new information. They can sign their HIPAA notice. They can, um, they can uh, add their medications, right? Uh, and once they click submit, those results will be immediately available to you and counselor here and any changes they made will automatically update in their profile. Okay. All right, moving forward here to invoices. And we won't, by the way, we won't go through every step of each one of these features. Uh, there are also companion tutorials that go along with this training that will look very specific, for example, at creating and sending questionnaires that look specifically at, you know, creating invoices and taking payments. Uh, so the goal here is to show you the general idea of the patient administration screen here. So uh, in the invoices tab, we can see, you know, invoices over time, um, any outstanding due. So this is concerning the patient owes us, and it looks like this has been synced a few times to QuickBooks. Uh, <laughs> the patient owes us money there for the November 17th. That's probably uh, something we want to follow up on, right? We want to collect on that. Um, but you can launch a new invoice from here, of course. Uh, this could be something simple, a new invoice for batteries, um, or you wanna take a copay when the patient walks in the door and then they're gonna have the services and then you can import the super bill, right? There's different ways you can go about this or creating an invoice for hearing aid fitting where maybe you haven't even set the appointment yet for the hearing aid fitting, but you wanna get the invoice in place. You can absolutely do that, okay? Um, on the devices tab, of course, we can see the devices this patient currently wears. Uh, we can see um, when the device tab where it says one plus, that's telling us it's between, it's between one to two years of age uh, for the devices. Uh, we can also, of course, see you know, trial period, service plan, uh, repair and L&D warranties, as well as the battery size, obviously serial numbers here as well. So a lot can be visualized in one place. Okay, and of course we can click into either one of these uh, devices and make any changes or update the status in the device as well. And there's the, the tools as well here to change these, the status very quickly. So I could, for both devices, say what is happening. Okay, um, or if you wanna start the process, like these devices need to go out for repair, you of course can create your repair form directly from counselor. You can print it off, you can store it, you know, put it in the box that's going, you know, out to the manufacturer, and then a copy of that repair form is immediately saved for you in Counselor. So that way you don't have to maintain a triplicate copy or anything, it's already saved in Counselor. Okay. You can also, of course, launch new devices. Um, this may be, for example, the patient is new to your practice, but they purchased devices two years ago from a different clinic, and you want to store those devices. Or you want to add a loaner for this patient, because maybe they're out for repair now. So let's add a loaner to this patient's profile and, and you know, document that that's what they're wearing, so we can track our loaner 
uh, our, check our loaners as well. Um, moving forward to documents, as I referenced before, um, document storage is, is very simple. There's really three methods for getting documents in place. You can simply upload if you already have a file. You can um, scan the direct scan feature I mentioned, as well as use the snapshot app. So the ability to take a picture of whatever it is you want to capture and it loads straight in. Now the documents feature is not just for documents as I referenced before, it can be for images. It could be Excel spreadsheets. You could store a NOAA file here, um, a variety of things. Uh, you could store PDFs, uh, a lot of different things you could store um, in, in here as well. Now document storage in Counselor is unlimited and no charge. So if you are in the process or thinking about you know, scanning your charts in, that's great. Uh, this will support that process very well. Okay, uh, the last option on the tab list here is the patient portal. Uh, this is the ability to um, create a, an area where the patient can log in and see the specific information that you want them to see. So um, they have the ability to, for example, request report appointments or actually launch uh, if you use online scheduling, they can actually launch the online scheduling process through there. They can see their invoices. They can make payments. They can see their previous results. So if I said, okay, for all his previous test report uh, uh, visits, I want him to only see the patient counseling summary. Okay. I don't want to see a professional. Maybe one, I want to see a professional summary, right? So you can decide what the patient will and won't see as part of this. Okay, but once again, they can log in anytime they want and see specifically what you want them to see. Okay. Um, also within the patient uh, administration screen at the very bottom, we can see the patient notes area. Now this one's a particularly kind of messy patient notes area, uh, but it's going to track all those little things. I referenced this earlier when we we're in the, talking about the dashboard regarding, okay, if we send out an invoice via email, or we print off an invoice. If we um, uh, print off a warranty expiration letter or email, counselor will make a note in the patient profile stating what happened. And so that way, at any time you can look back in the patient profile, anyone can, and see that, oh, you know, we sent you a happy birthday letter. That's why you're calling us. You can see that right here. Or of course you can create, you know, a notes on the fly. These are tend to be much more of the procedural type notes, things you want to remember about a patient. This would not be for documenting a patient encounter. All right, this is just for um, for noting the patient called, we'll be on vacation for next two weeks, that type of thing, okay? There also is a tool available in the top menu bar here uh, of the patient profile where you can bring open, first off, you can see any alerts related to this patient profile as well, as well as bring up a summary of this patient information. Now this can be handy when you're in the patient administration screen because it just puts a lot in one place, but you also have the ability to bring this open, let's say when you're working in a patient visit. So maybe you're working on your chart note or you are uh, performing an audio, you can bring the, the same pop-up open. Or let's say you're in an invoice and maybe you're working on a claim, you can simply click up here and it'll open that information for you as well. So this patient summary is available in different areas designed to just kind of encapsulate a lot of important information for this patient and show it to you very simply. All right, so there's a lot going on, as I mentioned, between the dashboard, the user chat feature, the to-do list uh, feature, as well as the patient administration screen. My goal today is kind of give you a general sense of what can what you can do uh, with those features. Uh, but most importantly, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Give us a call, email us, live chat us. You can do so here under the help menu. Uh, there also are a whole series of tutorial videos, as I mentioned, that many of them supplement what we're talking about here that go into much more detail as far as individual functions um, within the screens that we talked about today. So uh, there's never a charge for support and counselor. So please feel free to reach out to us and let us know if we can assist in any way.